Oscar in Quinta do Val de Lama and uh, my name is Hugo Oliveira. I'm a landscape ecologist, regenerative designer and nature dweller. And we are here today to showcase some of the examples that we've been trialing here in the Quinta do Val de Lama uh, on agroforestry practices. In the Iberian Peninsula uh, for millennia that humans have been in symbiotic relationship with their ecosystems. And one of uh, the results of such symbiotic relationship has been the creation of wood pastures. And here in Quinta do Val de Lama, we found a remnants of one of such practices that it's called the mixed rain-fed orchard or pumar misto de sequeiro in Portuguese that has an overstory of uh, almonds, carobs or figs and then as pasture. When the owners first got the property they, they found a remnants of a pumar misto de sequeiro. It was already in the cake so one of the strategies that we've uh, uh, that we've uh, designed for this area was to include more trees so we have a little bit more almonds so that we have a canopy more covered with a little bit more shade and also the productive element of the of the almond trees and also uh, since we are living times of change of climatic change also look at the strategies for adaptation to climate change and uh, as the one here in the back that is a swale so that when we have the winter rains, we have a more uh, harvest of the rain water that falls and we have an infiltration to the soil so that we can then store that water deep in the soils and deep in the roots of the trees. Trying to stack functions, we've uh, incorporated several uh, innovations within these uh, uh, landscape units. One of it was uh, creating fodder banks you know, including um, some woody plants that uh, are fodder for the animals. This one is a mulberry, a white mulberry, uh, very nutritious. And uh, in the way you utilize, utilize the abundance of water that we have from the harvesting uh, water in the swale to produce biomass that we can then give to the animals and also create living fences that are productive living fences with quinces and pomegranates as a crop that we can harvest. This is a swale. So it's part of our water, rainwater harvesting uh, uh, strategy. And basically it's a ditch in contour together with a berm that holds the water when it uh, rains and allows it to sink in and infiltrate in the ground. So to provide a connectivity, not only of humidity, but also of wildlife. And we are using here on the upper part, the black mulberry as a fruiting crop. And on the lower part, the white mulberry as a fodder crop for the animals. And also a variation we have in this swale is that off of the swale we buried a lot of wood and uh, organic material so that it creates a node of fertility where microorganisms fungi uh, develop and create a node of fertility that then uh, expands as the time passes and it's also an area where the water most uh, con uh, concentrate because the overflow it's at these at uh, this point of the swale, close to the ridge. So you are also bringing the water closer to the ridge, and then as it goes out, it gets harvested by the next swale. Because we also like to learn and receive the feedback from the systems we implement, we are monitoring the humidity content that is harvested within these uh, swales. So we have some sensors on the lower side of the swale and also on the upper side of the swale to monitor during the rain events, how they behave in concerns to humidity in the soil. We are doing it in the area that doesn't have wood buried and in the ugal swale or organic swale in the area that has wood buried. Also to compare both and see if the humidity content is higher in one or the other so that we then can multiply these strategies for other places and also share these results. One year after implementing the strategies in the south slope, we came into the north slope and as a more gentle uh, landscape, we've uh, decided to 
make at the over uh, the overstory tree in this uh, landscape unit to be the carob and in this sense we wanted to have a local variety so we are now grafting this variety to a local variety that is more productive than the rootstock and uh, the way we implemented this uh, strategy here in the north slope was also to follow the same adaptation strategy to have a swale that harvests the, the winter's rain. And in this case, because we had good success in the south of doing the ugle bed with the, with the bearing of organic material, we developed that strategy here. So we have two swales that divide two plots uh, where holistic plant grazing is uh, um, operationalized and uh, both swales are ugal swales. In the, in the swales itself we, we have also developed fodder banks using the same species as in the south slope. So mulberries and the uh, medicago arborea as the leguminous species for the shrub layer of the fodder banks. So the adaptation strategy we implemented for the plantation of the carobs was to create what is called half moons on the, on the lower side of the tree that harvest the waters uh, when it rains and it holds also the organic material that comes with the, with the rain and creates a, an area of more humidity and fertility around the tree roots for the establishment. Uh, also, because we want these trees to be productive, we establish irrigation, but this is just supportive irrigation. You know, for the peak in the summer, we just give a little bit of water so that we have success, we increase the success rate of these trees. Being an area that will welcome grazers, we have to protect the young trees from them. So we, the strategy we use is to pro provide these tree protectors so that the trees at young age, they are protected and as soon as they grow to a height that they are well established, then the tree protectors are taken out. Hi Kelsey, so as an intern here at Kindred Valdolama and these, in this landscape unit here that we are, what are the highlights for you uh, until now? Well, I've been here since March um, and throughout that time we've done like um, a lot with the animals, mainly holistic grazing, um, which is really interesting because like back in Australia they don't have that at all. So it's just set paddocks so they're non-movable and all that kind of stuff. We started now giving the mulberries to the animals as a, a fodder supplement yeah. and uh, we know that the trees are still growing and they, they have still a lot to grow. Um, what do you think about this, uh, this uh, technique or this strategy? I think, I think it works pretty good and uh, definitely it will take the time if uh, the objective is real regenerative of the soil. It will take the time to that happen but still it's... It, it, after a couple of years you can see already the difference mm -hmm. and so more patience you have the more it will work mm -hmm. and uh, you've been uh, moving the animals around doing the holistic plant grazing uh, strategy isn't it yes and uh, how many time how long do they stay in each paddock well more yeah, or less you know? more or less will will be probably uh, again if it is if it is winter time will be probably two times one each month mm -hmm. Not, yeah, one each month, one, two and two months, then it depends on the climate, like if it rains bad, if it doesn't, it will take more time, all of these things needs to take, uh, mm -hmm. to take in consideration. So they pass the paddock one time each month, one in two months or one in it's, one month? Exactly, exactly. Okay, this, this during winter, then spring and autumn, they, re they decrease a little bit, isn't yes, it? definitely, definitely. Like if this is, for, for example, this is already the last time that they will pass here. Mm. It will not have, to make this kind of system, they will not have enough food mm -hmm. to being contained. And sheep as they are, they will not respect so much the, the electric fence, mm -hmm. depending on the fence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in the past we had some difficulty in the summer, isn't it? Because there's not a lot of yeah, food, no? Definitely. So until now the animals had been... Uh, in a stable during the the summer months they like it yes it's like it's so dry outside that or you go like a traditional uh. kind of way and you shepherd with them right like you, you just walk with them 
or you need to contain them somewhere. In this case, you, you do the fixed mm -hmm. plots or stables or things like this. So do you see that these fodder banks are, you know, since they are green in the summer, uh, could be a possibility to supplement and keep them moving? Yes, definitely. Once, once we can do this, they can come here in the dry season, take only the seeds because there is always seeds on the ground and you can supply them with the, the for the banks, okay. the things that you have in the for the banks. So it's, a, it's maybe one more rotation that you actually can mm. do. <laughs> Great. We experienced this world on the legacy of what prior generations left behind for us. And we, what we develop and what we experience during this lifetime is what we leave as legacy for next generations. Today we were looking at the, an agroforestry practice that uh, we are experimenting here at Quinta do Valdelama. It's an agro pastoral system with uh, strategies for more extensive landscape management and I hope it was useful for you guys. So this was the first episode of a series on agroforestry practices as developed here in Quinta do Valdelama. Please leave your comments, share the video, come for a visit, and we wait for you here at any time. Hope you enjoy. Thank you.